I approached Rahman sir first because I wanted to have, uh, hold that post, the music post, and and basically to make the film. Because we started with such a high rock star, where all the songs were, we did very well and still doing well. The responsibility of people just dissing, oh, see, it's not as good as rock star. I'm the first critic for that. He can hear a music which I can't. You know, he has a full picture in the mind. And actually with him also, when he's playing the first note of something, I think there is a whole 3D map that is already there yeah. of the song that exists. But I can't see it. If we, if we do something or they will like it, I don't believe in it. That's exactly <laughs> That's, what yeah. they'll throw it on his face. <laughs> <laughs> because they're also evolving. They're listening to so many things. And basically, I needed singers, singers yeah. for this part. And then so my uh, range was very right. narrowed down by that. And then Diljit was the only obvious choice ultimately. Yeah. There are so many singers. And uh, if I want to sing, I can sing in my own album. Like, it's a responsibility when you have a film album. I feel like the opportunity should be given to the best people. And, and Rehman sir does a Punjabi album <laughs> yeah. after all. He's reinventing, Indiasali <laughs> reinvented himself in filmmaking. Highway of life, when two rock stars met, they created an unforgettable tamasha. May their safar nama continue to give us timeless music, timeless movies, and a whole lot of hope for the entire nation. Hi, this is Sheetal, and you're watching me on Pink Villa. Joining me in a conversation, we have the one and only Imtiaz Ali and A.R. Rahman. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good, good. Welcome to Pink Villa, firstly. Thank you. It is an honor for me to be here and have this conversation. A, because you both are my inspiration. I'll tell you the reason why, okay? The love, the dedication, the passion that you have for your art. That's what I've learned from the two of you. So thank you for being you and inspiring millions out there. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I want to start off by asking you, the duo is back after nine years, right? So what is the kind of duo. equation? <laughs> because of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical duo, I must say that. What is the kind of equation that the two of you share as artists? So we'll start with you. Uh, I, I largely follow him <laughs> and that's how it goes and I feel that uh, there's a lot of, uh, I derive a lot which is also not music oriented, not music based for the films that I make from him. That's how it is. Uh, I don't know, I think we connected uh, before Rockstar, we, we made Rockstar, which never happened, then the real Rockstar happened. So we know from that time and I'm always intrigued by new filmmakers who come in. Uh, I started in 91, 92, so when he came in, it was like, I, you know, you, the enthusiasm in both of us to discover what we can do without having any rules or, you know, formulas, was always intriguing. In this film, which is very similar, because we're going to a territory which we're not familiar, but find something which is very exciting for that place without losing its authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, out of curiosity, when you say this, I want to ask you, uh, has there been a time that you both have had a creative conflict? I'm guessing no, but everybody's, what do you do when you have a creative conflict? <laughs> manifesting it. No, you're not manifesting it. <laughs> this is the third time you're hearing this question. Anyway, creative conflict uh, will only come when somebody is saying, this is it, I'm not going to make anything, I, I feel it's right. And they say, no, 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 I want something better. But here it's not about individual egos. It's about what will be good for the film. So there are many times where um, he is not liked a song. Then I said, yeah, well, let's do, do something else. And there are many times when he is liked a song and I didn't like it and I've tried oh, to. Yeah, that, yeah. that is what usually happens. <laughs> like there are many, many cases where I have already liked a song or a certain piece or a certain part and he says, no, no, I'll do something else. And because, uh, and I usually don't argue also because I feel that within the song, like, he can hear a music which I can't. You know, he has a full picture in the mind. And actually with him also, when he's playing the first note of something, I think there is a whole 3D map that is already there yeah. of the song that exists. But I can't see it. Some, he might, you might think, sir, that I also am hearing the whole thing, but it's I'm not. <laughs> it's in, so sometimes I go with, uh, I always, always go with no, what I, he's saying. I don't kind you of... You know, because we started with such a high rock star, where all the songs were... We did very well and still doing well. Yes. The responsibility of people just dissing, oh, see, it's not as good as Rockstar. I'm the first critic for that. Oh, do you get self-critical? I'm, yeah, always. All the, <laughs> so I look at it and I said, this song is good, but this, this? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Rahman sir gets self-critical. <laughs> no, so so oh, that, that actually forces us to think, okay, 
not this one. Maybe what if we have a classic like something like that here? And we try for it. I said, if if it if I don't deliver, we have already have the backup. Yeah. So. The backup is always there, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, in an earlier interview, I think you mentioned that you always wanted to make uh, music for Punjabi, right? Yeah. In, the, in Punjabi. So, what fascinated you about Chamkila and you then made sure that, yes, I want to be part of this journey? So, first question is like, what am I going to do with this? We already have songs of the Chamkila. The original There's songs, a story. Yes. And so then we, we were just, uh, I think there's always room for discussion. So, we just sat and said, Okay, I, I just I just don't want to be like a remixer taking some you know <laughs> song and yeah. and and then we said like why don't you have a director's version, music composer's version, both together a perspective which is like more musical theater, which takes like Maria you know people talk about Maria in, in sound of music and so do something like that oh he's like this he's like this he's like this, and you have different characters giving all the perspectives, so it makes them even more larger. Like he's not just shunned by, not killed, but he was also celebrated by different people for different various reasons. So that became a song and another song. And so, yeah, initially we thought the whole movie would be like that, but I think we, we played Good it. Good balance, balance, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imtiaz sir, I want to ask you, uh, I feel personally that uh, Main Punjab Hu, that Ishq Mitai song is going to be the anthem for everyone, right? Tell me about how important is that song for you and for the movie as well. How crucial is it? Well, Ishq Mitai, uh, what it talks about is perhaps the basis of the reason that I wanted to make the film. Because it's not only, I think uh, uh, Punjab and Chamkila have a certain drama in common. In that way, Chamkila is a reflection of Punjab, uh, the mixture of opposites. So, um, that thought actually preceded the thought of Chamkila. Uh, what you hear in Ishq Mitai, the presence of fire and uh, something beautiful at the same time. And uh, Main Hu Punjab as a, uh, came later. We had the song, we shot the song and then I think later on we had this Main Hu Punjab. He added that in the, in the song later on. Yeah, and what does it mean to you? I feel like how different people make a state, yeah. you know. And I felt really good about it. Here is an artist who got killed, uh, who people thought that he was vulgar and everything, but then he was Punjab, then, because he was the conscience of Punjab. Uh, he gave joy to Punjab. We're not judging him, but what he was, we just honest reflection of that stuff. You know, when you say this, I had a question for you, actually. Uh, the trailer launch was amazing, right? When I saw the trailer, I, there was this one thing about double meaning lyrics, right? And back in the 80s, for ha, for you to have a double meaning lyrics is a huge thing, right? While people respected Chamkila and all of that, but they still dissed him a little because of the kind of lyrics he wrote. Sure. So, what is this contrasting personality that you've tried to show even in the movie? Well, this contrasting personality is about somebody who's trying to serve to the audience what they want. He's very uh, aware of the fact that people enjoy a certain type of song and he's trying to give those songs to them, especially at a time when their life, their lives are in despair. There is mayhem in their life, so there is very little for them to feel good about and he feels that he must give them the songs that he likes. He also is aware of the fact that he's going to get more popular because of this, etc, etc. And he is also aware of the fact that his, his life will be threatened if he continues to sing them. Then finally, it's a question of, is he going to be able to not, to give up music? It's like giving up your love, mm -hmm. which he was unable to do and therefore he suffered the consequences. Yeah. Wow. You know, uh, Rahman sir, uh, to compose a music, there are a lot of elements in it, right? But for us as audience, we look at the longevity of a music, right? What is the primary element that you seek for while making music? I know there are so many elements that you're going to talk about, but what is that one thing and what makes that longevity in a music? I think the core, I think there should be melody. There should be, I always believe in good lyrics. Lyrics which are not just mundane, uh, the cliche, but you know, imaginative, which provokes a thought, which, uh, and uh, I think that's what I, I like working with Imtiaz and Rishad Ji. So, because they, he picks up the tunes which are, which could be that. And so we all agree on that. And then Arshad comes with great stuff. Then he picks up the best from him. <laughs> and then there's a song made. So you're in good hands. When you know that you're in good hands, you just push yourself to go even more further. 
we are also in good hands because it's such good music. <laughs> you know, when you mentioned, right, uh, Rockstar was such a hit and even now people talk about it. So this duo coming back after so many years, does it get a little pressurizing that what is the audience going to say? Are we going to live up to the expectations? What's the kind of pressure no, I, that... I think we have our own expectations. <laughs> yeah. Because I think right now, there is a comment about everything. Like how we have done the musical about all the gossip and yeah. the song. <laughs> if we have to do a gossip song about ourselves, it'll be like a multi, maybe 50, 50 songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole album altogether. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so, I think it's always an opportunity with Rehman sir uh, to work. I think that's the most fulfilling and uh, rewarding part, to be able to work. I mean, I don't know, I, it never I, comes to my mind about what people are going to think. At least for some time it doesn't. It's like, uh, this is an opportunity for me to really dive into something and you know, and I know that he's watching. So, I, I really want to first enjoy myself. That's the While primary. in the, in the, yeah. in that the reflects. making of music. If we enjoy, people enjoy. Mm -hmm. If you feel it's great, people feel it's great. If we, if we do something or they will like it, I don't believe in it. That's exactly <laughs> what yeah. they'll throw it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> because they're also evolving. They're listening to so many things, not just our, our stuff. So they know what's good, what's bad. Just like an instinct. Yeah, instinct, yeah. You know, Aparinithi re recently mentioned that she had to give an audition on Zoom, right, for singing. Do you guys remember what is the song she sang? Uh, Maskalandar. Okay. No, no, it was not uh, that we didn't believe that she can't sing. No, no, I just no, wanted to know what level of singing yeah. she has, but she's so incredible. Yeah, she is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How did the cast, I mean, Diljeet, Parinithi, and then even A.R. A. Rahman sir, and the entire, all the people involved in this journey, how did it all come together? Well, this is going to be a very long answer. I'm It'll ready for it. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> no, but I approached Rahman sir first because I wanted to have, uh, hold that post, the music post, and, and basically to make the film. And um, then Diljeet was the obvious choice, but I actually took some time to get to him because I was, I was thinking that it might not work out with him for a few reasons. Pariniti was the first choice. And uh, because and basically, I needed singers, singers yeah. for this part. And then, so my uh, range was very right. narrowed down by that. And then Diljit was the only obvious choice ultimately. Yeah. So it's I'm the best very, 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 yeah, it's the only choice. Yeah. Like when you watch the film, you'll have hopefully realized that. Yeah. I honestly, can't wait for the movie to release, and I just want to watch it in like the first. One hour of its release itself, that's what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rahman sir, I want to tell, uh, ask you that AI is the buzzword right now, right? So how do you think AI is making an impact in the music making process? And do you think that uh, it's going to impact the human, the personal touch that a music needs? So I just answered this, like, uh, you know, there are m many different realms. One is the physical realm, one is the spiritual realm and intellectual stuff. So there is a certain thing which it's covered. And it's scary to look at that. But there are many other areas where humans are humans and they excel. Because we evolve. And what happened in the 60s is different, 70s is different. we going against, uh, you know, we know what the tools are now. Yes. And we excel on that. And there's competition, there's criticism, there's so much. For, for instance, doing something like this, um, A is generic, right? Whatever they're fed, it's like a Frank, Frankenstein where People are fed in all the stuff and it's taken, it's robbing all the stuff and giving something, which is incredible. For certain things, I think it should be used as a tool to speed up things and also empower, you know, like kids from yeah. underprivileged yeah. so that we can uh, get amazing, you know, we can push their lives up and so making leaders out of this stuff. Use it for the good, good not yeah. firing people out yeah. and be greedy, take all the money. Yeah. So, I mean, it should give more jobs, not take away jobs. Take away yeah. jobs, yeah. You know, while you say this, the other part of the world is live music, which you've done yeah. in Chamkila, right? Talk to me about that. How did it happen? And what was the crux of making sure that you want to record live music and uh, compared to a recorded music in a studio? So for the Chamkila, originally Chamkila Ji's songs, um, <clears throat> naturally, because you know, Diljit is a great singer, and we wanted to set up a band, and we wanted to set up a recording thing where it feels so live. And so we worked on it like a week. We had all the musicians here, how to mic them up. And so I sent my assistant Hiral and she was there on the location. The set throughout when we were shooting. Yeah. Because what happened? I, I miss going there. Yes, yeah, that was, that was fun. 
Um, but but what happens in a live singing situation is that a singer is also reacting to people, and that is affecting his singing in some ways. Yeah. And uh, obvious things are that he stops singing and talks a little bit, and then continues to sing, which people do. And it's not only at concert. Also, there were many situations where they are rehearsing and talking and getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. So it's like a romantic scene, but there's also singing because for Amar Jyot and Chamkila, the connection was music. Mm -hmm. It was like a love triangle yeah. <laughs> in that way. Yeah. And uh, so if they are rehearsing, they are also liking each other more and more. So you needed to sing as well as talk and break out of one and go into the other. So for that you needed uh, live music, live music, live yeah. music recording. Wow, you know uh, one of my favorite tracks from the movie has to be Bol Mohabbat. It is my absolute favorite, and then comes Ishq Mithai. I just want to put that out. Rahman sir, I want to ask you, uh, how do you choose songs that you want to sing in your voice? What is that <laughs> one thing? Because, yeah. I was I always dodge. Why? Then, no, no, because as a leader, I think there's so many singers. And uh, if I want to sing, I can sing my own album. Like, it's a responsibility when you have a film album. I feel like the opportunity should be given to the best people. But then when they persist and they say, no, no, you have to sing and sing. Then but I, sometimes I feel that his voice brings some quality to the song. All which, his fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> which doesn't come. And you know, all through, even before I was working with Rehman sir, I was always looking at which song is he singing. You know, in uh, in in um, Dilsevich song has his voice. Yeah, yeah. So then, so I want that quality in uh, in my songs also. And sometimes you feel that, like in Bol Mohabbat, we are talking about a person who has uh, decided that he risked death. death yeah. It's almost like a march to death, not with bravery, but with, but with love. Mm -hmm. You know, and how to. Go there. What would he be thinking, and what his what will his voice therefore sound like? A very spiritual realm. Very, yeah. yeah. So and, that and that it's song. very very evident in the way I think the entire music has been composed. Right, it just takes you into a different world altogether. So that's one thing. Rehman sir, I want to ask you uh, a couple of few questions. That you know, there is one thing that is an artistic freedom, right? And then uh, another side to it is the commercial demand from a filmmaker, not just for Chamkila but for any other music that you make. So, how do you try to maintain a balance between these two? No, I am very commercial. I, I, so the thing is, whatever you do, if you don't have a song which is, people resonate, it's a, it's a failure. You fail the film. And sometimes certain makers don't even understand that. They ask me to do stuff and I said, where is the song? So, no, we don't need that stuff. And then finally what people blame, who? They blame me. And but sometimes some people come with only commercial stuff. Every song should be a hit. That is also very, very restraining because then what could be even great music becomes to the parameters of setting. So here he is not, I mean, he, I think subliminally he wants that stuff, I think. Everybody wants that. <laughs> yeah, but maybe song. he's not told it to you. Yeah, yeah, no, he doesn't. That yeah. pressure actually brings the whole product down. It makes it very, very nice. yeah, but it, it strangely everything fell into place. I wish I had more time with the two of you, but I just have to ask you one last question. If you had to tell the audience that w one reason why they should watch Chamkila on the 12th of April, what would it be? He's reinventing, Indyas Ali <laughs> reinvented himself in filmmaking, has given Diljit Singh, has, uh, you know, understated in acting and Parniti, you know. And, and Rehman sir does a Punjabi album <laughs> yeah, after all. Exactly. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can't wait to watch this movie. All the very best and uh, thank you so much for this lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you.